Good morning, this is Pooch. He's getting a bath right now. He's sitting in some conditioner. Uh, this is the conditioner he's sitting in currently, thermoactive. You can see I've got his hands all, or his hands, his hair all over my hands. Um, so we've got our tub shower going. I showed how to use that uh, in my last video. We've already done our shampoos. Um, I was gonna record me giving him a bath, but I think it's kind of redundant. I think we know how to do a bath at this point. Um, but yeah, so he's just soaking in some conditioner. Um, and then we're gonna be putting him up on the table and drying him and I'll show you guys some some tips and tricks with the dryer. Um, but I wanted to mention real quick, for a dog this small, you kind of can choose whether you want, oh, that's a mole, sorry, I was like, is that a flea? Um, but you can kind of choose whether you want to do them in a kitchen sink or a bathtub. He is at that point where I think he's just a little bit too big for the kitchen sink and I don't want him to be uncomfortable. So I'm doing his bath in the bathtub, but I will say it's harder on me to do it in the bathtub than it would have been to um, do him in the sink. So keep that in mind, do what's easiest on your body. Is that something stuck in your hair? I think it is, I'll get it out later. It'll probably come out when we're blow drying. Here you go, you sick pootie. But yeah, so um, I'm gonna rinse him out in just a second and then um, we'll be back and we will do the blow dry and talk about a little bit more things with that. Um, but yeah, so for the bath, just do what's easiest on you, bathtub or uh, sink. Um, and if you are gonna be using a bathtub, definitely get one of these camp showers because it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Okay, you guys, so I realized I truly had a blonde moment um, a minute ago. I was just blow drying pooch uh, and I recorded talking about what I was doing, uh, but I didn't realize I'd actually not connected my AirPods to my phone. So all you can hear is blow dryer noise. So I'm just going to tell you really quickly what I talked about uh, in the video that I recorded. So we have our little dryer. This doesn't, I mean, it's a small dryer. It doesn't have tons of power behind it. So to increase the airflow pressure, you're going to use a concentrator. This is going to concentrate that air to one area. So um, it's going to be a lot more powerful than it is when this is off. When you're going to do around the head and stuff, then you, um, we're not going to blow dry anymore. We're done. Uh, but then once you're done getting like the body mostly dry, then I would take it off and use it without the concentrator around the head. Uh, another thing I touched on is this is one of my favorite tools for blow drying. This is whether you're a house call groomer or not, this is just a great tool, allows maximum airflow. So if you think about it when you're fluffing, every time you fluff with this cushion brush, every time it goes in front of this dryer, it's blocking the air, you see? blocking all that air. When you're blow drying with a vent brush, it allows maximum airflow. So I could blow air straight through this thing. And that means every time I brush, the air is also hitting the coat. Does that make sense? Uh, so this is a really great tool to have. It will increase your blow dry or decrease your blow dry time. Uh, so that's another great tool. Uh, another perk of the vent brush over the slicker is hair uh, is more flexible when it is wet it can stretch up to 50 percent when it is wet that sounds kind of cool right well it's not cool uh and if it stretches that much it can damage the hair okay so hair is essentially very weak and flexible when it's wet so we do not want to stretch out hair as it's wet so what i'm saying is instead of brushing them with this when they're wet and using more tension and pulling on that hair and potentially damaging it, if you use something like this with for teeth further apart, it's still gonna do what you need it to do and brush through the hair, but it's not gonna stretch it and damage it. So definitely recommend, I just hit myself in the face. Anyway, so definitely recommend this. Uh, last thing for blow drying that I highly recommend is the groomer's helper. Uh, I don't want dogs accidentally stepping off the table. Um, and as you know, when you blow dry, a lot of times they're like, ah, and they like start running around. So I use the groomer's helper to keep them still. Um, I only have one dog that actually bites for nails um, and I do use it for her. She's a bigger dog. Typically I would just do the hound hammock. That's what Pooch will get. He'll just get the hound hammock. Um, but yeah, so use your groomer's helper to keep your dogs on the table. 
Uh, and then I always put a towel down as I'm blow drying so that way uh, it'll catch the water rather than the water being all over the table and the dog sitting in it and getting re wet. You see what I'm saying? I'm so sorry. He's like, woman, I hardly like you and now you just hit me in my face. My beautiful face. My God, woman, you're crazy. I know, Poochie, now I love you. He's like, yeah, I like barely tolerate you, but whatever. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, those are the major differences with blow drying. Um, and if you have the Shalandi, make sure that you, and that's the blow dryer name, it's the Shalandi. If you have that, make sure you have an extension cord because it's actual cord is pretty short. So I just wanted to discuss that real quick since our video did not work out. Um, that's going to be the main difference. Also, uh, I don't do D sheds in people's houses or bathrooms because it does leave a huge mess. So, uh, I turn down D shed dogs, um, or I'll give them an ultimatum. Like, you know, I don't prefer to do it, but if you have somewhere like your backyard or a screened in porch or whatever, um, you know, I could do it there, but uh, ideally I do not want to do D shed in your bathroom because your whole bathroom will be coated in hair. So groomer's helper, dryer, vent brush. Okay. Those, that's, that's it for, for blow drying. I think we know how to blow dry. <laughs> All right. So we'll be back in a few for the haircut. Now, when you're in somebody's bathroom or wherever you are in their house, you do not want to be leaving a giant mess behind you. So clean up as you go. So I've got my bag hanging right here. I'm going to be grabbing all of this hair and putting it directly in the bag. Okay. So I just want to keep my area really clean. If his mom were to pop her head in here, and again, this is my house, so she's not going to do that. But if she were to pop her head in here, I don't want her to look in her bathroom and see a giant hair explosion. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that's one major difference between house call, uh, hair cutting versus, um, in salon hair cutting. So in the salon, we just say, screw it. We'd let all this hair hit the floor. It wouldn't matter. But again, when you're in somebody's house, even if you're going to clean up every single hair at the very end and it'll look beautiful or whatever, they may not realize that, um, you know, if they come to peek in their bathroom and it's a disaster, they're probably not going to be very happy. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, just um, clean up as you go. Um, and just keep in mind, like, you are in nice houses and you want to keep it clean. So, um, and it, it, this also makes it a lot easier at the end because instead of having, like, a full groom's worth of haircut to clean up, I'll usually only have like a second worth of cleaning. I always vacuum my table off when I'm done. And then I, um, stand up a little bit. So, um, I always vacuum my table off, get that clean. And then I fold the table up and then I run the vacuum over their floor one more time just to make sure I didn't forget anything. So, um, Easy peasy. Pooch is actually, I think he prefers getting his hair cut here because you guys can't see, but behind you are a bunch of mirrors. So you can see that he's staring that way. He is checking himself out something fierce. Like he knows he looks good, you guys. He's not playing. But yeah, <laughs> look at him. It is just cracking me up. He is like, yes, I look great. Um, but yeah, so that's the main difference. Clean up as you go. Utilize your little vacuum cleaner. Um, and just don't leave a giant mess behind yourself in people's houses. Like I said, even if you're planning on cleaning it all at the end, they may not know that. And if they come in and see like a giant disaster, I also feel like they'd be more likely to nitpick. So if they see like one hair somewhere, I feel like they'd be more likely to say something if they saw this giant disaster and versus like if they saw like you were keeping really clean and then maybe you forgot one thing. You see what I'm saying? Like, I just like to be very neat. I don't prefer to groom in people's houses. Um, just because of the mess, everything else about it is fine for me, but the mess is something that I personally worry about. But I will say that I have been to houses that they will not allow me to clean up my stuff. Like they're like, 
they're like, we will do it. No worries. Like there was even one house I went to that I was like trying to like discreetly clean when they weren't looking and they kept catching me. They were like, no, no, leave it. We'll clean it up. And so anyway, it's a lot more like personal, the house call grooming. And I think that's the biggest perk of it is that it's so personal. Uh, a lot of people, these are their kids. So um, when I, when you're a house call groomer, you become part of the family instead of just being that bath lady that they see every six, eight weeks. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I, I really have been enjoying the more personal touch of the home groom. Um, and yeah, there's definitely, like as you guys can see, there's like some learning curves. Um, like I'll show you whenever we go to do Pooch's nails, how I lift them up into the hound hammock now with this new setup and all that. Um, but yeah, it's really great for me. It's so much more relaxed. Like I don't feel rushed. The last couple times Pooch came, uh, I was not only fully booked, but overbooked and he ended up there for a long time. And that was so stressful to me knowing dogs were waiting on me. Even if the owners were okay with it and understanding, um, I just, I don't like people waiting on me. And it stressed me out knowing I had a bunch of dogs waiting for me to groom them. So, uh, to me, it's a lot better. But definitely weigh your options. Um, some people house call is great for. They want to do it forever. For me, um, it's temporary. I don't, there are parts I don't like. Carrying your stuff into people's houses kind of sucks, depending. Some people help me do it. So it's actually not bad at all. But, um, you know, sometimes I go to like these like little ladies houses and they'll offer to help. But I'm like, honey, my stuff weighs more than you. I, I just can't do that. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, there's that, but I think that's the biggest setback for the home grooming is just the mess and the carrying stuff. Um, but again, the mess isn't an issue for everybody. Um, and then what I've been doing is taking a select few at my house, like pooch. Um, it just didn't work for his mom's lifestyle to have him, have me groom him at her house. Um, so I agreed that I would take him here and I will do this for some dogs, not for all. Um, cause I obviously, I'm not running a business out of my house. This isn't what this is about. Um, I'm just doing this to make it easier on me. Honestly, doing this with Pooch makes me want to tell all my clients to just bring their dog to my house because it's so much, it's, to me, home grooming out of my own house is like the perfect in-between between house call and uh, the being in a shop because I feel more like I'm in a shop right now. Um, but you see, so you can see like my counter is right here. So I'm squeezing myself in here. So this is like, this is honestly something really to be aware of. If you are going to do house call, be flexible. You guys, you've got to be flexible. You've got to be prepared to deal with whatever situation. Um, the other day I groomed a dog in a bathroom that was so small. It was basically the size of my table and I was inching it around it like this and it's okay. It really doesn't bother me, but um, I can see how it would be an issue to some people. So if you're not that type of person that is like super flexible and willing to like work in any environment, you may not like home grooming. So anyway, um, Pooch is ready for his nails and stuff. So actually, I guess I'm just gonna keep you guys going. This is going to be a bit of a chatty haircut video, I guess. Um, same thing. I'm just going to keep my table clean. I'm just pretending like I'm in the in a client's house right now. Again, uh, I think I said this earlier, but if this was, like, if I wasn't doing this demo for you, I would just let all the hair fly and hit the floor, um, just like I would in a shop. And I would clean it up at the very end. But I want to just show you guys exactly how I do it. 
So now we need to use a hound hammock. So we are going to take him off the groomer's helper and I'm gonna grab his little tootsies. Oh, don't fall. <laughs> That's such a fear of mine, you guys. And I'm gonna just go ahead and hook him to this bar. And then keep his little front leg out there. All right, sorry you guys, he's gone a little off camera, but that's okay, we'll, I'll straighten him back out in a second. So, pick up his back leg carefully, put it in. Same thing on the other side. All right, take it, put your clip in and clip. So now I'm going to kind of pull him back with me a little bit. And I'm going to disconnect the grimace helper. And just do a little bit at a time, okay? And kind of give him a little wedgie, just like that. And he's like, what are you doing? All right, tighten that. And I'm going to lift this side up a little bit. I'm just gonna go back and forth like that until he's up where I need him to be. But doing it like this just makes it easier on me because what I was doing at the last shop was actually just like lifting them. And some dogs that was really easy to do, other dogs it was not at all. So there we go. And he's up. All right, so we are going to finish the groom as usual. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that's different for house call. Just really the cleanup, but um, I think you guys can figure out how to clean up, you know? So anyway, um, I guess we're about done here. So I'm just gonna shave his paw pads and finish up his haircut. But I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about house call and what the differences are and what to expect. Oh, one last thing. If you're gonna do house call and you're coming from an environment like me where you weren't face to face with the customers, make sure you're comfortable talking to people because um, I've realized over the years that I have gotten worse about it um, and it's harder for me to make conversation, but when you're in somebody's house, you will be having to talk to them for a while. So make, get, practice making conversation. If they tell you something, like I have one client that's a huge USC football fan, um, but her husband's a Gators fan. Uh, I made that note on her account, so I know it for next time. So you can even, um, in your groom notes, where you would normally write your haircut, write down stuff about their family that they tell you, so that way you can go back later and talk about that later. You see what I'm saying? Delise brought that up in a Hey Joe podcast, and I was like, that is brilliant. Um, she was talking about, like, if the kid gets braces, you write down, got braces, so that way next visit, you say, hey, how did Bobby do with his braces? You know what I mean? So anyway. That's the only other thing to keep in mind. Be ready to talk to people because you're going to be doing a lot more talking than you probably were doing in the shop. But yeah, that's really it. I think home grooming is really great. It's a great alternative if you want to start your business, but you don't have the funds to just go out and buy a building or buy a van or whatever, you know. It's all expensive. It all costs money. So I think home grooming is a really great option for somebody that wants to start a business with clients that, you know, they're keeping or maybe they want to bring in new clients. Um, and I think it's a really great way, like for me, I'm using this as a way to save up for a mobile van. So um, I really like home grooming. Uh, again, it's not something I would do for the rest of my life, but I think it's great for now. Um, it's been really great. There's some learning curves, but it's a fun career. So I'm really glad I chose to step out and do home grooming. Uh, and I hope this helps you out if you are also in the same boat and you're thinking about starting your own home grooming business. 
um, you can definitely do it. And if you need any help, don't hesitate. Message me on Instagram. That's where I always check Instagram and I'm going to see those messages first. So if you have any questions, concerns, anything, message me on Instagram because sometimes it's hard for me to respond to uh, comments on YouTube. Uh, I, I tend to just forget more. So anyway, message me on Instagram if you have any, any questions at all. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!